Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a full in-depth tour and review of the 2020 Porsche Taycan Turbo. I'm gonna walk around not only the exterior features and technologies, but also the cool things we have on the interior of this car before finally taking it on a full test drive. This is Porsche's latest model to hit dealerships and it's got a really cool innovative powertrain. I can't wait to show you guys around all the new features and options that Porsche has put in this model. So let's get right into the video. And I'd like to begin today's review by looking at the exterior of the Taycan Turbo. You can really tell Porsche put a lot of thought and effort in designing the exterior of this model. And it's got a really beautiful look to it that is kind of traditional in many ways, similar to older Porsche models, but has also been updated with new modern styling and technology and a really cool marriage between those two things. Modern, yet also traditional and kind of harkens back to old legendary Porsche models like the 911. And it really does deserve a full look at. So we're gonna go around and talk about not only why I think it's a beautiful design, but because that's more subjective, we're also gonna talk about some of the cool features they've added, starting off right here in the front of the car. Now, some of you who have been around on my channel for a while may remember that sometime last year, I reviewed the Mission E concept car. And that was really a predecessor to this Taycan. It showed off a lot of the different styling cues that we're seeing now in the production model, the Taycan. Now, the Mission E was not a fully functional production car. It was basically just meant to sit there and look pretty, but the Taycan is fully functional with these gorgeous LED headlights. Now, these are a new style for Porsche with those four LED bars in there. They're very bright. They light up the road very well, I imagine, at nighttime. And they also provide a very stunning look during the daytime. It is a very sharp and modern design. But we can see in the way that it's got this circular headlight in the middle and really the kind of curves all around it, it's also got that old heritage styling that Porsches are so well known for. Now, moving right below those headlights, we've got another really cool feature on the front end of the Taycan, and it's these little air inlets right here. Porsche calls them air curtains, and they are completely functional and allow air to flow around the car, improving not only fuel efficiency, but also things like downforce and just general aerodynamics. But I don't wanna to spend too much time on just one thing such as the front of the car, so let's move along to the side now where we've got more even cool features. This model does feature some really cool 20 inch rims on the side here with a nice gloss black with silver highlights. I think it accents the side of this car very well and ties it into the gloss black we have around the window trim right here. This window trim really does a good job of highlighting the beautiful, almost coupe-like proportions on this car. It is a sedan, but since it's got such beautiful curves and really such wide fenders right here, it almost does look like a 911 from the back. In terms of some of the actual features on the side of the Taycan, I'd like to point out we once again have fully functional vents here on the side of the car that are gonna pull turbulent air out of the wheel well when the car is driving at highway speeds, and that's gonna allow it to pull down even more tightly to the road and get more traction to the front wheels, improving handling. But we also have another cool kind of technology on the side here, which is these folding door handles. Now, when the Taycan is at its resting position and locked like it is now, these door handles are gonna pull in tight to the side of the car to give it a more streamlined look. However, if you were to approach the car with the key or unlock it by pressing the button, these door handles are going to pop open and allow you to access the car. This is a modern feature we're seeing on a lot of new car models, not just from Porsche, but I think it does a good job of showing off the new technology that Porsche is adding to their modern cars. Now, I'd like to wrap things off at the rear of the car where we have, once again, that similar styling to Porsche's other older models, but new technologies and new features that I think are really stellar on the Taycan. So it does have a folding spoiler back here, similar to the door handles. This spoiler will pop up at high speeds and again, improve downforce. But we've also got a full LED light bar back there that's very similar to the updated Cayenne and provides a really cool look for the car and I'd finally like to note that because this is an electric car, it does not have any exhaust outlets. Instead, they've added a really cool looking diffuser back there that once again helps with the aerodynamics and the general styling of the car. But while we're back here, I'd like to segue into the powertrain of the Taycan because not only is there an electric motor up front, but also one back here on the rear axle. That's right, this car 
has two electric motors in the turbo model and that allows it to not only have all-wheel drive but also improve performance in terms of acceleration but also improved range. Here in the turbo model you get 201 miles of range from just one single charge and that's not the best I've seen. I believe Tesla does have a few high range models that can go a little bit farther but when you also take into account that this car is very luxurious, it weighs 5,000 pounds and also very fast, we're gonna talk about the performance more in a minute, I think 200 miles of range is actually pretty good. And depending on the type of charging you have, there are a couple different stages, but apparently it can charge up to, I believe, 80% in under an hour with the right kind of charger. And once it's charged up, those two electric motors are gonna provide insane performance in terms of the horsepower and the torque. The turbo model produces 670 horsepower in the overboost mode and also 626 pound-feet of torque instantly from a stop. You don't have to rev it up to get to the right torque curve. It's automatically right there at your foot whenever you need it. But if 670 horsepower is not enough for you, there is also an upgraded Taycan Turbo S model which offers 750 horsepower in 0 to 60 in just 2.6 seconds. Now with that model, Porsche claims that from a standstill, the acceleration will push you back with a force of 1.2 Gs, which is even more than the force of gravity. So when accelerating in this car, you're experiencing more forces than you would when skydiving from an airplane. Now that sounds very impressive and I can't wait to drive this car in a minute. Now, when you step inside the new Taycan, the first thing that you'll notice is that it turns on automatically. Because it's not an internal combustion engine car, there's not a whole sequence you have to go through like putting your foot on the brake and turning it on. Because it's an electric car, the motors are always ready to go and all you gotta do when you get in is take the gear lever and bump it down to drive and you're off. Now, I will be taking it on a full test drive in just a minute, but right now I did go ahead and turn it off after I got in just so that I could show you guys around this interior real quick so you know what sort of features and options that Porsche is offering with this model. Something I've noticed that manufacturers like to do with electric cars, because the powertrain is so modern and technologically advanced and progressive in a way, they also like to reflect that in the interior and put a strong emphasis on the interior's technology as well. So with the Taycan, we're getting an early look at some of the technologies that will eventually make their way into Porsche's other models. And obviously, the main technology that I'm talking about is all these various screens. And to start with, up on the dashboard is Porsche's infotainment system that allows you access to the different media things in the car, such as the Apple CarPlay. We've also got GPS navigation, and it actually allows you to search online if you need to find a hotel or a restaurant quickly in the car's infotainment itself. But the Taycan doesn't stop there because they've added another screen right below that on the center console area. Very similar actually to what we see in the 918 from just a few years ago. And this allows you to control some of the different settings associated with the car itself, such as the climate controls. And one of the last screens in the car is this absolutely stunning gauge cluster that is a curved screen that goes all the way across the steering wheel and it shows you some very high resolution and sharp gauges. And I really like the gauge layout in this car. All the gauges are lined up in a row, very similar to the 911, but it also brings some of that new technology that we all want in with the customization and obviously all the different features you can access through this screen. And speaking of old traditions and new technologies, I would also like to mention that over here on the left side of the car, we have the start stop button. Now, Porsches traditionally have the ignition on the left side of the car, but again, we've got that new modern twist to this tradition, whereas instead of an ignition where you turn a key or a start stop button, it is an on off switch. Now, moving a little bit away from the different screens and the different technologies they've added into this interior and focusing more on the physical features, I'd like to point out that these seats are also very comfortable. They're similar to what you would get in a new 911 or one of their other models, but I especially appreciate how you can adjust the headrest back and forth. It's a really cool look in terms of the color and the design of the seat, but they're also really comfortable and customizable to your body. And moving along to the center console area, beneath all the screens, it does come with two cup holders as standard, so there's plenty of space if you want to take it through a drive-through. We've also got a little box here where you can keep your phone, and I especially appreciate how they added a little tab on the side of this box that's gonna hold your phone in place under hard launches or cornering or things like that. And as you can see, there are a couple of charge ports and a 12 volt power outlet as well. 
Now, finally, I'd like to take a moment to look at the rear seats of this car, and I will note that they are pretty cramped back there, not as cramped as a 911 would be, but not quite as spacious as one of their SUVs or even the Panamera. You are gonna sacrifice a little bit of space with all the beautiful, gorgeous styling out there and those fantastic proportions. So headroom is not fantastic, legroom is slightly better. In general, I would say it's fine for small children or for short car trips, but if you're a tall passenger like me, you might not wanna be back there for an extended period of time. But that's enough talking about random features and technologies. Let's finally take this thing out onto the road and see how well it performs. And now we've arrived at my favorite part of every review where I finally get to go on a test drive of the new 2020 Taycan. Now, I've been wanting to do this since they've announced the car. I am very interested by electric cars. I am one of those believers where I think this is the future of all transportation, whether we like it or not. And I just can't wait to see what Porsche has done to bring the engaging driving experience to electric cars. I have driven other electric cars, namely the Audi e-tron, and I found it to be a fun experience because of the instant torque, but it was a little bit lacking in feedback and just general fun. And it was designed to be an SUV, so I'm really interested to see how the Taycan contrasts that by making an engaging and fun to drive car, if it is actually those things. Now, I believe the model is available or standard or does in some way come with rear wheel steering and that will allow the wheels to turn uh, oftentimes in the opposite direction of the front wheels to make it very easy to maneuver. It's not a particularly large car, so it is rather easy here in the parking lot. They've also got things like brake-based torque vectoring at higher speeds, so it's easier uh, on the track. And I will say visibility from the front and the sides is fantastic, but through the back, because we've got that beautiful sloping rear hatch area, it is a little bit harder to see things. But I guess that's what the reverse camera is for. Now out on the road here, it's once again, very quiet and comfortable ride because it's electric and because it's a Porsche, obviously, it is gonna be comfortable and quiet like all their models. And speaking of comfort, the adaptable electronic suspension is doing a great job of soaking up all these bumps in the road. I'm barely even feeling them. All right, we have a chance to do a quick acceleration here. Let's go for it. It really, it just, it, it takes off and it throws you in the back of your seat and you're going way faster than you should be, way sooner than you expect it to be. Wow, apparently it does have a transmission actually. Most electric cars, because the torque comes in so smooth, they don't even need transmissions, they just go. But apparently the Taycan does have a small two-speed transmission in the back, and that's gonna help with efficiency and also taking off from a start like this. Oh my gosh. It's faster than a Line 11. It is faster than a Line 11. It is missing that visceral sound, the feeling you get from the sound, the engine just rumbling through your soul that you feel in a 911 and other similar sports cars. But what it lacks there, it really makes up for in terms of the straight line performance. It is very fast. Got some turns up here that I'm very interested to see how this handles as well. It is a very heavy car. And you can kind of feel that. It's not as nimble, I would say, as some other cars I've driven that are lighter. I used to own uh, uh, another Porsche, actually, a 944, and that thing just eight turns up. This does handle well, but there is uh, a sense of disconnect, again, because of the, uh, the steering wheel. There's just not a ton of feedback. But I just want to accelerate again. Oh my gosh. So in general, I am fairly impressed with the new Taycan. You know, as I said, there's not the same analog feeling that you get with an internal combustion engine. The steering does feel a little bit more disconnected than some other cars I've driven, some other sports cars, and it doesn't have that nice rumble and the sound of it changing through gears, which as a car enthusiast, I think I'm really going to miss when we finally do have electric cars taking over. But, you know, we face trade-offs with every decision, and I think ultimately, the gains we get in terms of efficiency, 
you know, helping climate change and also the performance, I think it will eventually be worth it for electric cars and may be worth it now with the Taycan to switch to electric. And that's my final opinion. But that concludes our review of the 2020 Porsche Taycan. So before you go, I'd like to extend a huge shout out and special thank you to Burt Smith Porsche here in St. Petersburg, Florida for giving me full access to this 2020 Taycan. I'll put a link to their inventory below so you can buy this car for yourself. If you guys enjoyed this video, and I sincerely hope you did, make sure to leave it a thumbs up and comment your thoughts on the model down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching.